Okay, tonight we'll start uh, the dinner of Tisha B'Av for the next three nights. Um, we'll talk general Tisha B'Av and then the details. Of, well, we'll see. We'll go in the order probably. Anyway, Tisha B'Av is a very sad day in Jewish history. Five terrible things happened. Just like Shabbat Shabbat Tammuz, we learned five terrible things happened. And Tisha B'Av also five terrible things happened. The first thing historically that happened on Tisha B'Av was... The spies, the Meraglim, came back from Eretz Yisrael with a negative report. The Jews started crying. They said, we can't go into the land. We'll never do it. So Hashem said to them, now you're crying for nothing. I'm going to give you what to cry about already. So the first terrible thing that happened was they came back, the spies, with negative reports. First base of Migdash was destroyed, Tisha B'Av. Second base of Migdash was destroyed, Tisha B'Av. There was a very large city called Beitar. We had tens of thousands of Jews. They were all killed on Tisha B'Av. And there was a wicked Roman guy, Turnus, Turnus Rufus, that was his name. Uh, he plowed the side of the base of Migdosh and he did terrible things there. So because of these five things that happened on Tisha B'Av, it became a rabbinic fast, but it became a strict rabbinic fast. All the other rabbinic fasts are from morning to night. Tisha B'Av is like Yom Kippur, it's 24 hours. So Tisha B'Av is a 24-hour fast, um, even though all the other fasts, let's say besides Yom Kippur, obviously, uh, pregnant and nursing women don't have to fast, Tisha B'Av, pregnant and nursing women have to fast. There's a general rule that even if you're pregnant, unless if you're sick, God forbid, but you need to, to fast on Tisha B'Av, no matter what the story is. If a woman gave birth within 30 days, that's the halacha, after, within seven days, everybody says. But uh, within 30 days, it says, uh, it's debatable if she, but nowadays the minig is that a woman who gave birth within 30 days of Tisha B'av, she does not have to fast on Tisha B'av. In Kippur, she would have to fast. Not, not on Tisha B'av. Okay, so let's discuss this year's situation because Tisha B'av is really on Shabbos. The ninth of Av is actually on Shabbos. And because you're not allowed to fast on Shabbos unless if it's Yom Kippur, you push off the fast to Sunday, which is Yud Av. So Tisha B'av, because it's Shabbos, has certain strictnesses of Tisha B'av, but at the same time, it's Shabbos. And Shabbos outdoes the laws of Avelus, of mourning. You know, even, God forbid, a person who lost a parent or a brother or whatever, and they're sinning Shiva, on Shabbos there's no Shiva. But on Shabbos there's certain things of Shiva you have to keep. For instance, uh, what's called Dvarim Shibit Sina. None of marital relations are not allowed, and, and uh, even uh, and Tisha B'Av. Um, so even this Shabbos, even though we're not fasting on Tisha B'Av, the, fast that, the fact that it is Tisha B'Av on Shabbos, so like marital relations are forbidden the night of Friday night, unless if the woman goes to mikveh that night, then she, they, can have, you know, they can have relations. As far as this year, learn, so let's go a little bit back. In the Hasidic world, the Hasidic Shepaskim, a lot of them paskin, that uh, even though in Halach it says, Friday afternoon you can only wash your hands, face and feet in cool water, well, the pearl in the Hasidic world, uh, they take regular showers out of Shabbos after midday for, for Shabbos, even though it's out of Tisha B'av. Uh, another thing is, so, but Shabbos itself, we learned in many circles, not anymore, but it used to be, that on this coming Shabbos, a lot of people would wear the weekday clothing because it's Tisha B'av. Even if it wouldn't be actually Tishman, the nine days they would wear Shabbos Chazain, they would wear the weekday clothing. The Hasidic world never did it, and now I don't think anybody in the world does it. So today everybody wears on this Shabbos, Shabbos Tikka clothing. Was it based on the that they did that? Or did they what? To wear weekday clothing? Yeah, and if you look in Shkhanach, that's what it says. But the Alt Rebbe and the Grom and a lot of other Paskim said you don't change anything, and that's really in the world today at large, that's the accepted custom that nobody does anything Shabbos. So even though it's Tisha B'Av, again, so Friday night, 
you can learn whatever you want. Uh, but you should finish all the regular learning before one o'clock on Shabbos day. Because Shabbos one o'clock is Chatzais, and it's still at, it's itself Tisha B'Av, but it's also at of Tisha B'Av for the fast. So therefore, all the things that people learn, like Shnaya um, Mikra, Ramba, Bechitas, Dafi whatever people learn, they really should learn it before mid, before one o'clock on Shabbos afternoon. What? Now, Pirkei Yav is Shabbos afternoon is a very, very interesting story that happened. The, Rabbe, the Rabbeim used to say Pirkei Avos during the whole summer. Many people only say it until Shavuos. So when it came this Kviyas of Tisha B'av, I was still in New York. I mean, it happens every year. Three years ago, it was the same thing like this year. But one time, the Rebbe by Febrengen was explaining that seemingly, from the Alter Rebbe, it would imply that you say Pirkei Avos on this Shabbos. There's a whole machlek, in Allah, do you say Pirkei Ovis the Shabbos, or don't you say Pirkei Ovis the Shabbos? So the Rebbe said clearly that according to the Alter Rebbe, it implies that you would say Pirkei Ovis and the Shabbos. Why? Because in the Siddur, on top of Pirkei Ovis, the Alter Rebbe writes that you say it between Pesach and Shavuos, the Yesh Nayagin, Leimar, Kol Shabbos is Sakayitz, all the Shabbosim of the summer. Now, because Tisha B'Av falls out on Shabbos every few years, the Alt Rebbe should have said, Chutz bi Tisha B'Av. Except on Tisha B'Av, you don't say Pirkei Ovis. So, the Rebbe said that year, it seems from the Alt Rebbe to say it. And that year, the Rebbe would explain Pirkei Ovis according to the way that you do say it every Tisha B'Av. On Tisha B'Av. The Pearl, our mini Pearl, and the Rebbe changed afterwards, and I'll tell you what happened. The Pearl, we don't say Pirkei Ovis this Shabbos. And the Rebbe said that when he said, especially according to the Rebbe, that, that he was so strict not to change anything from any Shabbos of the year, so it would imply, but the pearl of the meaning is that we don't. Bottom line. The first year after that, that it happened, the Rebbe said that because there are different opinions, everybody, no, let me preface it. You normally, Shabbos Mincha, the Rebbe would stay after Mincha, the Rebbe sat down in a seat and said, Pirkei Ovis, throughout the summer. That Shabbos, by the Fabreng, and the Rebbe said, I will go to my room, everybody should do what they want. I will go to my room and do what I want. That's what the Rebbe said. I remember when the Rebbe said it. And the Rebbe went to his room. We don't know what the Rebbe did. But the pearl, bottom line now is, according to our custom, we don't say Pirkei Ovis, this Shabbos of Tisha B'Av. That's the bottom line custom in Chabad. We don't say uh, Pirkei Ovis and Tisha B'Av. But Pirkei Ovis... First of all, Pirkei Ovis is supposed to say after Mincha, the Alter Rebbe brings down. No, we just postpone it a week. It says in Poskim, even if you say, let's say this week would be Perigimel, they say even if you would say Perigimel, next week you say it again anyway, to be equal with, with, with everybody. But the we don't say Pirkei Ovis. So basically, Shabbos is everything, you dance the same, you do the same, everything. In fact, it says you're supposed to show more permissible Simcha and this Shabbos more than any other time. So after Chatzais, there's no... no after Chatzais, the minig is, our minig is also that you learn only things you're allowed to learn at Tisha B'Av. So we can, if we're falling behind Chita, so should just postpone it? Chita, you could probably finish because it's regular shiurim. But uh, ideally, you have to make sure to do Chita, Smavid, the Rambam, Dafayemi, whatever else you learn. Your regular shiurim should be done before one o'clock on, on Tisha B'Av. What we're doing here, what we did three years ago also, um, we're going to do the regular shachris, you know, the two minyanim. Then after Davin, we'll have a Kiddush. 135 is the earliest you could have a mincha, technically 133, but 135, this is what we did three years ago and before that also. We're going to have a mincha. Everybody will go home and eat their Sudha Shabbos and their Shalashudas, whatever they want, they can eat. We'll discuss soon, you know, what you're allowed to do for the, on that Shabbos. 
So Shabbos, you can have meat, you can have whatever you want. It's kosher, obviously. You can eat whatever you want. The Gemara expression is, and the Gemara is, even like Shlema Melech when he was in his heyday, such a royal feast, you'll have to have a royal feast on Shabbos. Up to Shkia, up to sundown. The fast begins Shabbos at sundown. Okay? But this Shabbos, the only restrictions, like we said, marital relations is not, in the, it's not allowed unless if it's the night of mikvah. You should learn all the regular shiurim before one o'clock. Everything else is the same. Everything else halachically is the same. Except after Chatzais, you learn, like we said, those things pertaining to Tisha B'av, but the rest of Shabbos is exactly, it says you shouldn't go walking leisurely. Walking, it's still Erev Tisha B'av, but you can't show any sign of open mourning on Shabbos. Normally, Erev Tisha B'av, you have, you sit down on the floor, you have the egg and the ashes and the, you know, and the roll. You don't do it, this Shabbos. There is no eggs and ashes, there's no, it's Shabbos, could eat meat all the way, all the way through. Now the fast begins at Shki at sundown, which is whatever time it is. I remember now. Um, but uh, I think seven fifty seven. No, probably a little. I don't remember. I have it wrote down already. End of thing. Um, so the fast begins at Shki, but it's still Shabbos until nightfall. So, I'll tell you what time Shkia is, 833 plus 18 is 41. Yeah, the fast starts like 837, 840, something like that. So you can eat until Shkia, then you have to stop eating. But you wear your Shabbos clothing, you, don't, you wear your Shabbos shoes, you're allowed to sit down on a regular chair, until Shabbos is over. When Shabbos is over, Saturday night, you say, Baruch HaMavdu Ben Kedush Luchol, to finish Shabbos. And then, our custom is, we do not change from Shabbos clothing, except the sneakers. So at 8.33, when Shabbos is over, check with Ben Shiniv, Yeah, 8.32. When Shabbos is over at 8.32, you say, Baruch HaMavdu Ben Kedosh L'chol, you change into sneakers. The rest of your Shabbos clothing is a machlekes in halacha when you change. Our custom is, the other garments of Shabbos, we don't change until after Eicha at night. You go home, then you put on your non-Shabbos clothing. What? Because a Chochamim pushed off Havdola, because there's have no Havdola for everybody. So you can't make, if there's no kid in show, what do you do? So right. The Chochamim pushed off Havdola. You do Atachan Antonio, you say Baruch Havdola. But Havdola is pushed off until Sunday night, but not completely. Because if somebody needs to eat on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday morning for health reasons, somebody has to eat, they have to make Havdola before they eat. What do you mean you can't really fast? They have health issues or whatever. If they're told by a Rav that they don't, don't have to fast, then they have to make Abdullah before they eat. What? If you have to take pills. If you have to take pills and tissue if you can take it without liquid, like swallow a pill, you could do it. So somebody just called me tonight before I came here. Can, can I take, if I don't, uh, you know, I don't have coffee and tissue above, so, but there's a caffeine pill. He says, if I don't take the caffeine pill, what happens is I get nauseous and headaches and there it is. Huh? I know, one second, I'm talking about a caffeine pill. But halachically, if you take it without water, you just swallow a pill, it's not really eating, it's just swallowing. If somebody has to take medicine, they have to take the medicine. Now, sometimes if they could do it without water, that's the best way of doing it. If they need a little bit of water, they could take a little bit of water. But logically, I mean, again, vitamins you shouldn't take. And other medicines that people have for heart conditions or blood pressure or whatever it is, 
don't they have to take? Now, if they could take it, I'll give an example. Some people take medicine twice a day. Yeah? So let's say, on Shabbos, instead of taking it at night, take it twice on Shabbos. Once in the morning, once before the fast. Then on Tisha B'Av itself, if you have to take it twice a day, you must. So one you take on Tisha B'Av, and the second one you'll take after Tisha B'Av. You can work, you know, a few hours, not going to make it or break it. But people that have to have medication, yeah, then they take medication. If they could do it without water, they should do it without water. Uh, if people need to eat, a lot of people have medications that you need to eat with it. So then they have to call it off because the Rav will tell them what to do in, in how to figure out how to take the medicine, how much food to eat, and things like that. Mm -hmm. The fact that Tisha B'Av this year is pushed off to Sunday, it's called Nitcha. So we learned already, one opinion the Gemara Rabbi says, Rabbi has a great opinion. Kivin the itche itche. Rabbi says because Tisha B'Av is pushed off from Shabbos to Sunday, it's pushed off. There is no Tisha B'Av fast. But the problem is, the Chacham disagree, and the Allah has like the Chacham, that we have to fast. But halachically, therefore, though, the fact that it's a pushed off fast <clears throat> is halachically easier as far as eating goes for people who must eat. Because it's still not the original day of Tisha B'Av, so halachically it's easier, but you can't just, you know, do it. <laughs> huh? We'll get there, but you're jumping the gun. I'll just stand to you because we have to go to Mayrif. And that is Sunday night, you could do laundry. You could take haircuts. You can go swimming. You can take showers. You don't eat meat or wine, except Havdalah. And there's a reason for that, because that day you fasted. So such an a fast of repentance, of tshuva. You don't eat meat the following day because you fasted. Um, concerning music, Sunday night is an argument in Poskim. There are Poskim, the right is better to be machma. A lot of Poskim say you can hear music. So the only thing you really can't do, according to all opinions, Sunday night is meat or wine. So you still have to eat fish or whatever. As far as what? Well, I'm saying you can do it on Sunday night. You can do laundry, you can everything except wine and meat. And according to certain opinions, you should wait until the morning for music. To be continued. <laughs>